Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And today I wanted to discuss this, in my opinion, absolutely extraordinary story of, I guess in some sense, you would call it um, detective work. Or to be more exact, the flash of light back in 2018 that resulted in the meteorite that spread across a really large area over the past two years has been so thoroughly analyzed by a wonderful team from the SETI Institute that they were able to discover everything about the asteroid even when it originally came from and when it was created. More specifically, they were literally able to trace back the time and identify that this piece of rock that you see in this picture was released through a collision with Vesta asteroid approximately 23 million years ago. And just the fact that they were able to do all of this simply based on a few pictures here and there is really mind-blowing. Honestly, this is something that would make Sherlock Holmes kind of jealous. But to help you understand how absolutely amazing this new paper is, which by the way, as always, you can find in the description below, let's start with baby steps. So a few decades ago, scientists tracking various asteroids made an assumption that one day we'll be able to track the path of every asteroid and we'll be able to predict where they're going to land and thus obviously be able to prevent our collision with planet Earth. All of this is essentially part of the so-called planetary defense. But back then, it seemed like science fiction. Although this recent paper makes it a little bit closer to reality. And although these types of tiny rocks don't really pose any threat to our planet, by being able to track these rocks and predicting their path, we're basically kind of learning to do this with other rocks as well. Specifically the ones that would be potentially dangerous. So our story starts on June 2nd of 2018. The Mount Lemmon Observatory picked up an unusual rock on the way potentially to collide with planet Earth. But the rock was really tiny and unfortunately a few hours later the rock was lost. But also at the same time several different reports from Botswana, a country in Africa, and nearby countries indicated that something definitely collided with the planet because there was a very very large flash in the night skies. Something that's indicative of what's known as an air bolide. Now these collisions obviously happen all the time and there are a lot of reports from across the planet. But what's unusual about this report is that it was originally detected as still approaching planet Earth. And so this is technically one of the only detections of an asteroid before it collides with the planet. The only other detection being this one right here from 2008 known as 2000 TC3. And surprisingly this was also from Africa but from Northeast Africa. With the important part here being the ability to track these asteroids and to also further recover them for further analysis. And so some of the scientists from the SETI Institute jumped on the opportunity to maybe also find this particular meteorite as well. But they really took it to a completely new level. They wanted to find out everything about it, including potentially the origins. But how do you even find these rocks? It's literally like trying to find a tiny pebble in a notion of really tiny pebbles. And so to try to figure out the trajectory and the potential collision site of this meteorite, the scientists decided to combine as much data of previous observations as possible. For example, they were able to find the observations from the University of Arizona that showed the approach of this asteroid prior to its collision. They also then worked out the angles from all of the pictures they received and were able to triangulate the approximate location where this asteroid landed. And by combining the observations with the trajectory calculations, they were able to work out the dispersal area for where they might find all of the fragments. Now, this by itself is already a tremendous achievement, just figuring out where this tiny rock probably landed on our relatively huge planet. And to make things a little bit more complicated, it turns out that the meteorite and all of the fragments landed pretty much in the middle of a national park known as Central Kalahari Game Reserve. You know that place that has a lot of giraffes, elephants, and um, yeah, lions and leopards as well. And so because of this, when traveling to this location, the SETI scientists had to hire a lot of local help. A lot of guards, basically. But within five days, along with the local guides and representatives from the Botswana Geoscience Institute, this person right here that you see in the picture, they were able to find their first fragment and then more fragments and eventually recovered all of these different pieces you see right here. So quite a lot of different fragments were recovered and they were pretty happy with their discovery. 23 different pieces, all of them suggesting that they all came from the same meteorite, similar in composition to what's usually referred to as HED meteorites. And HED in this case stands for Howardite Eucrite Diogenite Meteorites. All of them believed to be coming from the asteroid known as Vesta, which is of course the second largest asteroid in the uh, asteroid belt. 
I know that normally most scientists would be more than happy with these discoveries and would probably call it a day. The SETI scientists from the study took it a step further. They decided to really find out everything. How long did it travel across space? What part of Vesta did it come from? Can they actually answer all of these questions? And surprisingly, the answer to all those questions was yes, they were able to determine pretty much everything. And that's where officially my mind was kind of blown. I really didn't expect someone to be able to answer all of this in such a brilliant way. So first of all, they decided to name this asteroid Motori Pun, which is apparently a name of a local watering hole where a lot of animals congregate and basically drink water, near which the asteroid was actually discovered. And because this asteroid is now sort of seen as a national treasure in Botswana, they decided to give it a Botswana name. And the first step here was to use various observations of orbital parameters to establish if it could indeed come from Vesta. The orbital analysis did show that the origins seem to be from within the inner asteroid belt, pretty much exactly where Vesta is located. Quite a lot of various asteroids have already been discovered with relatively similar orbits also coming from this direction, and they all have been linked to Vesta as well. But the next question was of course, well, how old was it? How long did it span in the outer space? Now here the scientists use a technique that relies on a simple idea that when in outer space, the asteroid is going to be bombarded with various cosmic rays. This will actually change the surface of the asteroid, producing certain isotopes. And the longer it spans in outer space, the more of certain isotopes will be available. And these are generally called cosmogenic radioisotopes, and they've looked at quite a lot of various isotopes in this case. For example, chlorium, beryllium, aluminium. And the analysis here suggested that the um, meteorite was most likely about 23 million years old. Which means that it was originally released from Vesta about 23 million years ago. Now, you might already know about the Dawn mission. This was the NASA mission that spanned quite a long time around Vesta and around Ceres. It studied them in a lot of detail, analyzing every single crater, studying every single part of the surface with a lot of detail. And all of the craters and all of the formations on Vesta are well known today, including some of the craters, such as, for example, Antonia Crater, which has already been identified at approximately 22 million years old and as a potential source of many different meteorites coming to planet Earth. So basically about 22 million years ago, something collided with Vesta, releasing a lot of the meteorites into outer space. And a lot of these rocks, after orbiting the solar system for 22 million years, are slowly falling onto planet Earth. And so initially scientists thought that maybe this asteroid also came from Antonia Crater as well. But turns out something wasn't adding up, specifically chemical composition was a little bit different. And in this particular case, some of the phosphates inside the Matoripan asteroid suggested that it was actually melted once again sometime around 19 million years ago. And this of course implied that another crater had to be identified. And it didn't really take them long to discover the potential origin of this asteroid, the crater known as Rubria. It sort of looks like this. It was created about 19 million years ago, still has signs of the collision when it actually happened, and seems to meet all of the criteria needed to explain the origin of this particular asteroid. And so basically by combining the chemical analysis with trajectory analysis, with a lot of analysis from other asteroids that came from Vesta, they were able to specifically identify the location where this tiny rock was created approximately 19 to maybe 22 million years ago. By the way, I'm saying maybe here because the true age of the collision is still not really clear. It could have happened within about 4 million years of that particular period. But just the fact that the scientists in this paper were able to pinpoint the pretty much exact location of where this came from is really, really mind blowing. This is like detective work of a completely next level, literally extraterrestrial detective work. And so because of this, when I finished reading the study, I was really surprised. I was really shocked by how accurate and how specific everything was. Just the fact that they were able to discover 23 pieces after just seeing a report of a flash in Botswana, just the fact that they were able to track this all the way back in time to Vesta, and then even identify the location where this asteroid came from, this is just way, way too cool. And if they could do this today, imagine what we'll be able to do in a decade from now. Being able to predict where things will collide or if they collide, and most importantly, being able to somehow protect our planet from potentially dangerous collisions, that's what it's all about. 
It's about protecting the species and the biosphere of our planet. Now, remember reading the original proposition for planetary defense back in the early 90s, and one of the ideas there was essentially suggesting that had the dinosaurs basically had space program, they would have never gone extinct. And so by being able to achieve these tiny baby steps and getting to the point where we can finally protect our planet from these really dangerous collisions, that's really what it's all about. This is the most important part of these types of studies and this is why it's important to continue this kind of work. But once we discover something else or once the scientists achieve a new groundbreaking discovery, well, I'll talk about that in some of the future videos. For now, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and check out the paper and relevant links in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful prison t-shirt, or by joining the channel membership, and either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.